What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back with another episode of Team Glock University. So today I wanna to go over a couple of divisions, divisions that I shoot a lot in USPSA, and kinda of give you the breakdown of the pistols, what you're allowed to do to them, and also what you're allowed to do with your gear, what gear you can use, what gear you can't use. So the first division we wanna go over is production division. Now, the idea of production was you're able to go to the gun store, you buy a pistol, and you can take it to a match and compete immediately. So production has some restricted rules. You're only allowed to stipple the grip, or what I have here is a silicone carbide. You can change your sights and you can basically do a trigger job, which is a perfect opportunity to use the performance trigger, which is what I've got in this gun. For the gear with production, you can use two separate setups. This is like a Kydex speed holster. Um, this is a double-sided belt. It's very sturdy, very rigid. Uh, stays really comfortable throughout the day, you know, competing at a match. They've got a lot of versatility. The only stipulation you have with this is the holster and your first magazine has to be on your hip bone, so you can't have anything out in front. Now, the other setup we can use, some of you may already be shooters. Shoot a lot, go to the range a lot, you practice a lot, so you may have a setup similar to this, which is a maybe a work rig, a duty rig, but it also serves the same purpose. You can take this out to the range, you can put it on, you don't have to buy new gear to go out and compete in production. You can simply throw this on, you've got your holster, you've got your mag pouches. Um, you can put this on and you can still go compete. Now, the other division we have is limited division, which is also another iron sight division, but limited offers more flexibility in things you're allowed to do to the gun. So you can stipple the grip or the silicone carbide, like I mentioned before, you can change your sights. I've got a weight on the front of this. It helps balance the gun a little better, adds a little weight to the front to help mitigate felt recoil. You can do a trigger job. I've got a performance trigger in this as well. One of the stipulations with limited is you have to shoot 40 caliber and it's a power factor rule, which is major, minor power factor. This is a, a race holster. It's really only got a trigger guard lock that holds the pistol in place here. I've got a locking mechanism here that holds, that locks this trigger lock in place so the gun's not able to fall out. I've got a barrel platform here to help stabilize the pistol so the front of the gun doesn't rock back and forth inside of the holster. Now I choose to keep my magazine pouches and the holster kind of on the hip bones because when I swap back and forth between divisions, I don't have a lot of changes between setups, between guns, between rigs. So when I'm practicing reloads or draws, everything stays in the same place. But between production, between limited, both share somewhat similar setups, but limited also offers more flexibility in what you're able to do, not only to your rig, but also to the gun itself. You'll notice here that I have two separate magazines. Production, you're limited to 10 rounds in the magazine, but you also notice I have a short base pad on it. The reason for that is this magazine inserted into the pistol also has to fit inside of a box. The limited magazine has an extended base pad. This, I get more bullets in the magazine. For USPSA, the overall length of the magazine can only be 141.25 millimeters, and for international use, has to be 140 millimeters. So that's the difference between production and limited. So when you guys are going to matches and you're going to compete for the first time, just make sure you guys are using the right equipment. Now let's go shoot some bullets. So production is all minor. What that means is it's your bullet weight times your velocity divided by a thousand. To make minor power factor, you have to hit 125. So with a 147 grain bullet, probably pushing around 875 to 900 feet a second to make right around 128 to 130 power factor. For the center A box, you get five points. For every Charlie, outside of the A box, it's three points, and every Delta is one point. So every Charlie that I shoot, I'm down two points versus one point for major scoring. This first drill, we'll shoot eight shots, check our hits, and then we'll start progressing from this a little bit. All right, come down range, come on. First two targets. We've got a no shoot target here, which would be a penalty target. So if you hit this, it's minus 10 points. So obviously we try to aim higher so it reduces our A zone. We've got one Charlie here, one A, so immediately down two points. We've got two alpha here on the close target. Then we move to the further targets. We've got one Charlie here. That tells me that my sight picture was sitting here on this perforation line as opposed to being in the center of the target off the transition. And then here, got two alphas here, kind of the same thing. My transition and my point of aim were a little bit left versus being centered. So I need to focus on that during the transition. So let's reload, we'll add a little bit of movement, and then we'll swap the limited. So for this drill, we're gonna 
make this basically like a 24 round stage. So I'll shoot the two close targets and the two far targets from right here, perform a reload. We're gonna move over to this side, then we'll set up on the two far targets, then shoot the two close targets, do another reload, moving back, set up again here on the close targets, and then finish on the far targets. That incorporates movement. I've gotta focus on the transitions, the sight picture, trigger control, making sure I'm getting the best points possible, and also it adds movement into it, so I'm somewhat simulating um, a course of fire or a large field course inside of a match. So, let's get after it. All righty, there we go. So, total time on that was 1398. Let's check out our hits. So first target, got five alphas, one Charlie, still kind of pushing the gun up away from the no shoot. Got six alphas here, then on the far targets, four alpha, one Charlie, one Delta. I called this shot, it was on the immediate transition off the close target. So again, before, like I said, making sure and focus on the center during the transition. And then here we have all six alphas. So with production, like I said, 10 rounds, a lot of reloads. You can take drills like this and change them however you want. As long as you're simulating the reloads, making sure you're only shooting the 10 rounds for the capacity, and also using the minor scoring system because the Charlies are two points down versus one point down. So making sure you're shooting a lot of alphas. Now, let's swap this out, shoot limited, and then we'll shoot some major scoring. Before I was talking about transitions, I was a little bit short of my mark, getting my eyes to the center of the target. So with this, to focus on that, I put a target out here way to the right. So I'll shoot these three, two shots each. And then I've got a hard transition over to make sure that I'm practicing that, getting my eyes to the center of the target and allowing the sights to follow. This is major scoring now. So every Charlie is now four points, so only down one point, And every Delta is two points. So only down three points now. So I get a little bit of leeway as far as points go, but I still want to make sure I'm shooting all the A's. One more time. All right. I really want to work on finding that focal point when I draw the gun, but also have some challenge here. So I got one Charlie there. I was a little bit further down, a little bit more confident in the sights. Got four Charlies here. It's good, everything's centered. Got three A's, one Charlie off to the right. Felt that one, just saw the sight drift a little bit, but because we're major now, I'm only down to a point, so I find it acceptable, knowing what all the previous shots were. Also here on the hard transition, I've got one Charlie, three Alphas, but if we see here, everything is staying centered. For both drills, only down two Charlies, I find that acceptable. Now, let's add a reload and a little bit of movement. So, first target, four alphas, right in the center. Second target, four alphas, right in the center. Third target, that's a close one. We'll go two alpha, two Charlie to be fair, but group's still a little off. And then right here for the far transition, ooh, another close one. Now three alphas, one Charlie, but they're centered. So throughout the drill, we're down two Charlies, which means for a 16 shot stage, I'd be down two points. Still wanting to make sure we're shooting in the center of the target, the alphas, but if you shoot a Charlie, if you find it acceptable and you're not down a ton of points in the beginning of the stage, then it's okay to move on and not send extra shots. All right, so the last drill we're gonna do, my favorite drill, the build drill, I shoot it a lot. I generally incorporate this into all of my training sessions. The reason being, it works on a lot of fundamentals. Draw, side acquisition, trigger control, recoil management. So we'll do a couple of these and we'll see how we turn out. All right, one more. was a 1.74. So the first one, 1.89, very controlled. Had all six hits right in the center. The second one, tried to push it a little bit, uh, shoot a little faster and let one Charlie slip out to the left, which is okay because the build drill is about pushing boundaries. You don't always want to stay in your comfort zone. You find a comfort zone, you wanna expand beyond that, understand what the sights look like, how the gun feels, and then make that a new comfort zone. So you're always increasing your speed. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that is Production and Limited. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions. If you have more questions, like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also, go to GlockIQ.com because we want you to join this community and be a part of this journey with us. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the range.